in Canada will definitely fail. What skills or what habits do you need to have if you want to guarantee that you will fail in business in Canada? There are two very dangerous words in the business management in North America. The first thing is hope. If you always hope that you make progress, it never works. You have to have a plan and replace the hope with a plan. Because when you hope something, there are millions of people in North America that hope for their success. And the ones who work harder, the ones who have a plan, the ones with sufficient network and also the funds, they will get successful. But you only with your hope will fail because you do not pay the price earlier. And the second thing that you need to be aware of is credit. You need to build a great credit history for yourself at both the personal and the business level. If as an entrepreneur you ignore your credit, you will fail. No one will support you. So this is the credit. When I say credit on both sides, the credit score, the credit history, the credit payments, the credit, because when you are an entrepreneur itself, it's not something as a reward you gain. It's outcomes. So now, uh, what does someone need to have in order to succeed? You need to have knowledge. Know-how know how of what you understand your industry exactly and it's not just about your personal level you need to have consultants by your side everything you need to do every decision you want to make you need to consult with others who have been already into the market for longer years so this is the let's say compiled knowledge of yourself and your consultants all together to make it happen that as that is officially asking for help from those who know more than you okay and uh, the second thing is always make sure that you have sufficient funds on your side because when you have errors you have mistakes you have things that never get precedented and then never get projected to happen the majority of time you can push it away with money that you have mm -hmm. do you recommend uh, that people start a business after they have saved a little bit or should they, in certain cases, go ahead and get funding and start the business with money that is, in theory, not theirs? It depends on the size of the business you want to run, but mainly I advise people to not to use your savings. Try to use the money from financial institutions and also other people that can join you, merge with you, make the bigger partnership happen, and then try to make it work. Because if you run out of cash and run out of, let's say, savings of yourself at the beginning, it's very hard to finance your company as well. But having that saving in your account support the bank as well to back you up. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If they want to approve you, if they want to be with you, they want to see that you've got already the savings available, They then they can contribute to your journey as well. But if you already only decide to be uh, dependent on the savings of yourself in the account, you cannot imagine how fast they get vanished. Mm, so if I understand, instead of um, burning your cash or, or risking bu uh, your cash, burning it, you should leverage it and exactly. borrow money. Of course, wisely and spend it wisely. I can remember Jim Patterson once uh, told Peter Legg in the in an interview with him that if we haven't had banks on our side, we never built that empire over years. So even at the level of Jim Patterson Group, which is almost one of the top five companies in British Columbia, maybe the second on the list, they always rely on the supports from banks to make it happen. So having debt financing or borrowing money from the financial yeah. institutions is not, an, not a bad thing itself. What is bad is not having the capabilities to return it back, but having the business, which is not on a good standing of sales. Yeah. Sales is something that the majority of entrepreneurs ignore. They want to build it. They want to go for marketing. They do advertising, but they ignore sales. So sales uh, is a completely different scenario and completely different thing than marketing and advertising. It's building a sales team, 
closing deal. Closing deals, this is an art itself. How to close deals, how to prospect new customers, how to present your products, how to handle objections. This is something that is a completely different thing than marketing and advertising, that you need to have sales professionals. You need to have a sales team trained. You need to have sales consultants to return on the money, all the money that you already borrowed for running the business. You need to be very active in sales and setting sales objectives and figures for your next coming two, three years, five years to make sure that you can gain more cash inflows. You can ask more people for joining you as investors. These are all going to be dependent on your sales figures.